Hi, I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman. I have the joy of serving as senior pastor of the New Mountaintop Church. We're located in Winston, Georgia, which is 30 minutes west of downtown Atlanta. And I would love to welcome you to subscribe to our channel. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And let me say a big welcome to the Midweek Refill. This week, we're going to delve into a subject that I believe is essential and literally paramount to our success in life. I believe this particular subject and this teaching that I'm going to share with you today is relevant to maintaining positive, productive, and powerful relationships in every area of our lives. And so I really want you to pay close attention today because this particular teaching will help you in so many areas of your life to be able to be effective in communication. And so the title of today's teaching is The Power of Effective Communication. And we're going to look at communication from the perspective of what the scriptures teach regarding how we should communicate, because there are certain things that as believers we should avoid and certain things that we should as well embrace. And so I want you to get a pen and paper and be sure to take some notes as we go through this biblical teaching together, talking about effective communication. How important is effective communication? Well, effective communication is vital for building strong relationships. Effective communication is really the key that helps us to resolve conflicts. And let's be real, I don't care what kind of relationship we're talking about. Wherever there are two or more, there will be conflict at some point. Communication is important for being able to share and convey ideas. You know, the scriptures provides us with so many numerous examples that teach us valuable lessons about the importance of communication and why we should be effective in our communication. The Bible helps us to understand how communication or the lack thereof can actually impact our lives. So in today's lesson, I want to explore some key biblical teachings on this subject of communication. And maybe we can learn together some of the lessons from the scriptures that will help us to improve our communication with our family, our co-workers, our friends, and even strangers that we meet. And here's lesson number one. Speak words of encouragement speak words of encouragement. Now we find the first scripture that helps us to understand the need for speaking words of encouragement in terms of effective communication in Proverbs chapter number 16 and verse number 24. There the writer reminds us, gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body. Wow. What a powerful verse that is. Gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to our body. If you like honey, then you understand the sweetness and the richness. There's nothing quite like honey on the earth. Well, our words have the power to uplift, to inspire other people, to bring sweetness, if you will, to the lives of other people. When we choose to speak words that are actually encouraging words, we can then build trust. We can strengthen our relationships. We can bring joy to those around us. So we all ought to make it a point to personally strive to be a source of positivity and encouragement. You know, growing up, I did not always have the most encouraging words spoken to me. And it affected my mindset. It affected how I began to see myself and how I began to see life. But when I got around positive people, all of that changed. We should all seek to be a source of positivity, a source of encouragement through the words that we speak. So keep your words sweet. 
because you never know when you might have to eat them. Here's lesson number two. Practice active listening. Now James 1 and 19 advises us here that everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Slow to wrath, the King James Version says. Active listening is a term that you may hear quite a bit of these days. What is involved with active listening? Well, active listening involves giving our full attention to other people. And notice this key now. We're seeking to understand their perspectives and we're responding thoughtfully to what they are saying. Now, active listening means that when we listen, we are paying attention, that we are demonstrating that we are paying attention. Our body language speaks to the fact that we're paying attention. If you're multitasking, it's hard to convey to a person that you're actively listening to them. When we listen attentively, we demonstrate that respect and that empathy that a person needs when they're voicing their viewpoint or their emotions. And in doing so, we are fostering healthy communication and we're deepening connections with other people. I want to encourage you that when your children are talking to you, your spouse is talking to you, significant others, your boo thing, whoever it may be, turn off your device, turn your body towards them and give them your full attention to express, I am actively listening to you. And here's number three, speak the truth in love. The words of Paul recorded in Ephesians 4 and 15 encourage us to instead of speaking with wrath, to speak the truth in love. We will grow to become, in every respect of the words, the mature Christian who is under the leadership of Jesus Christ, based on that verse, when we learn to speak the truth, key words, in love. You know, honesty in all relationships is critical, it is vital, it is crucial, it is a non-negotiable. But honesty must be coupled with compassion and love. You know, I like to tell people all the time that you can tell a person anything if you say it and frame it the right way. So honesty has to be partnered with love when it comes to the words that we speak to each other. You know, we should communicate truthfully, absolutely. However, there must be sensitivity. We have to take into account the feelings and the emotions and the place that a person may be in. And in so doing, we ensure our words are words that build up rather than tearing them down. So by balancing truth with love, we can then promote understanding and we can foster growth in every relationship. And isn't that what we ultimately want to achieve? To have relationships that are constantly growing, getting better, getting brighter, getting more beautiful. That's what we should want. Well, here's lesson number four. And this is a hard one. Avoid gossip and slander. I already know you're ready to click this off. Don't leave yet. Don't touch that dial. Let's listen to what God's word says. Proverbs 11 and 13 warns us, a gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy person keeps a secret. A gossip betrays confidence, but a trustworthy person keeps a secret. Now, I know you're thinking, why am I talking about gossip to people who probably go to church that are watching this video? Well, engaging in gossip and slander can damage relationships faster than a wrecking ball. Engaging in gossip, talking about he said, she said, without real facts, sows discord and it brings harm to other people, not only to their relationship, with others, but also to their name. 
So instead, let's strive to be trustworthy individuals who can guard our words and speak positively about other people. I always like to say this, if you weren't there and did not see, then you truly do not know. We should only speak on what we know to be facts. Choosing to promote unity and respect our communication, it brings glory and honor to God. That's why we shouldn't gossip. That's why gossip is a tarrant when it comes to communication. We dishonor God and the person about whom we are gossiping. Well, listen, we want to speak words that blesses God and blesses all of those people who are around us who have to hear us talking. Here's lesson number five. I know that last one was kind of difficult. Seek reconciliation and forgiveness. Seek, re seek reconciliation and forgiveness. Now, Matthew 18 and 15 is a passage I love because it says this, if your brother or sister sins against you, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. There, Jesus gives us an account of how to deal with conflict, not to broadcast it to the whole world, but to go directly to the person with whom we're having the conflict and deal with it one-on-one. -on -one. You see, when conflicts arise, and trust me, they will, it is vital, crucial, and essential to actually address the conflict directly and humbly. Don't dance around it. Don't try to pretend like it's not there. Don't try to act like nothing is wrong, but actually deal with it directly, but we must deal with it humbly. You see, by approaching others with a desire for reconciliation and forgiveness, we're opening up doors. We're creating streams and doors of opportunity for reconciliation and for forgiveness. In doing this, dealing with it directly and humbly, we're creating opportunities for healing, for restoration. You see, my friends, effective communication plays a vital role in resolving conflicts, in fostering stronger relationships. And effective communication is something that each and every one of us must practice, starting right now. So in my conclusion, the scriptures offer us so many invaluable teachings on communication, so many invaluable principles that we can live out each day concerning communication. And if we follow the teachings of the word, or word of the God, it can guide us in our interactions with other people by speaking words that are words of encouragement, words of positivity, words that are uplifting, words that build people up. We are literally practicing active listening, speaking the truth, in love and in humility and avoiding gossip and avoiding words that are slander words and words that tear people down and also seeking reconciliation in all of our communication and relationships, we then become the model of Christianity that this world so desperately desires deserves, but if we can be honest with each other, no longer believes exist. When we practice forgiveness as believers, we can then cultivate healthier relationships. We honor God through our communication. So, my friends, what are you going to do with this teaching? Here's your call to action. I want you to take a personal evaluation of your communication. Go back, jot down the points, and ask yourself a question for each of those that I've shared with you today. Does my communication line up with what God's Word says? Am I gossiping? Am I speaking words of slander? How am I using my tongue? God wants us to allow our words to bring blessings and unity and glory to God. We bring 
blessings to other people. We bring unity to the body of Christ. And with our words, we can bring glory to God. Hey, I hope that you got something out of this teaching. I really enjoyed sharing it with you. Would you please do me a favor, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. In the comment section, let me know which of these teachings, which of these points for this teaching today speaks to you the most. What do you need to work on? Hey, this is Bishop Littman with the Midweek Refill, Senior Pastor of the New Mountaintop Church. I appreciate you watching. Please share this. Love you so much with the love of Jesus Christ. Until next time, you go with God.